So I want to talk about the cumulative volume data because this is something that I keep seeing online, people posting online, and it seems like they necessarily don't completely understand how, how this tool should be used or um, you know how it's made of and for, for what type of kind of environment this is made. Um, anyway, so I most of the times when, when, when I see someone posting um, the chart with the cumulative volume delta it's it's obvious over a kind of a longer time frames which you can see the chart on the screen is a this is a daily chart on bitmax and uh, down here there is a cumulative volume delta indicator which you can see that it's you know there is not not really any any sort of a a kind of a correlation with price there are some minor details but overall you know market was mostly kind of a ranging going up the cumulative volta delta was going down market then you know basically moved back to the all-time high the indicator you know was going up but overall not that much then we had a, this kind of a huge sell-off now it's kind of a bouncing but um the the issue with this is obviously uh let me let me actually talk about how this thing actually you know is made and how i think you should be using you know i'm not saying that this using using it on a daily time frame uh doesn't work and there of course can be some some sort of thing that i'm not aware about and completely missing but you know it, once i kind of talk take you through how how this thing is built like why why these bars happening on the chart basically it 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 kind of doesn't make sense to me to use it on any any sort of a higher time frames anyway so it all basically boils down to to this thing you know this is a depth of market for um this these are the 10 year german bonds and you can see that in a in this a blue column you know right here we have the limit orders that want to buy in the red column here we have the limit orders that want to sell uh and you know this doesn't necessarily mean anything you know they are just kind of a resting in the order books and obviously you need a kind of a aggressive um aggressive participants which are the market orders that will you know actively go and you know buy into these offers or you know sell into these bits because without that this would be if, if there would be no aggression in the market you know these these would be just kind of a resting orders but you know you need people to execute to them on these on these columns here th this is not so important these are just orders that are getting you know uh pulled and added to, to, the, to the price levels you know so you can see someone added 36 orders it's it's quite a fast obviously in real time but these are the pulled and stuck orders and kind of a, this is this is the important thing this is the orders that were that were actually traded you know you can see that someone sold 78 um, bought 111 and so on and so forth so these are the actual you know the market orders the orders that that someone you know uh, wanted to for example sell the 96 and he uh didn't want to wait because obviously sometimes uh what is, what is um what can happen is um if you um want to sell you know for example this this 96 or 97 you will place your order into the order book and the market will trade at that price and move lower from there without you know you getting filled uh, this is obviously because this is kind of a queue you know if you place the order here you can see for example if you take a look a little bit higher there is a 356 uh, orders to sell here if you will place your limit order there you will be then kind of a last at the line so if, if market then trades to the level and only 200 orders will get filled you know it it means that you just kind of get stuck and didn't get filled at all so uh people 
tend to sometimes you know execute with market orders because they they just want to get in the market quickly you know these are usually your kind of a smaller traders who doesn't trade with much of a size and because if you execute the market order um, in in these boons for example uh, right away you know obviously you will get filled but you are paying the spread you know you are instantly one tick one tick you know in in the negative uh, if you if you use the market order which is you know if you are trading one lot um, in this market the one tick equals to 10 euros so if you are trading with a one lot that's that's obviously something you probably can kind of stomach but if you are trading hundred lots or a thousand lots you know it's it's kind of sucks to to start you know in thousand and thousand euros negative so you are much rather to use the the limit orders but basically this is this is where the delta is coming from you know delta uh represents the the market orders that were you know actually executed because this is still just an advertisement you know these orders doesn't have to come through you know if i would come here and place a thousand lot here you know it would be sitting in the book but it would actually doesn't mean anything at all so the delta this thing only rep only represents the orders that were executed and this is a simple simple footprint chart this is a crude oil and i think yeah, this is a crude oil um and you can kind of see this relationship in in these candles you know um the the bits and the offers are traded diagonally you know this is something that not many people realize that the relationship between these numbers is not horizontal but it's a diagonal but this is a obviously due to the kind of a spread you can see these these numbers are not horizontally next to each other but they are you know diagonally if i am sitting if i am at here at 01 and if market is at 01 you can see how the price basically stay the same for a tick but it changes from a bit and the offer you know sometimes this price is traded in a bit sometimes it's traded at offer there's now there is a spread now but if i am wanting to buy here i am using a market order and i'm i'm executing into these 30 uh two at the offer you know although market is trading at o2 if i'm you know using a market order i'm buying into the o3 so this is why the relationship between the number is actually diagonal not not horizontal and you can see that on the left side obviously we have the um let's let's actually look at for example on this candle uh, on the left side you have um the sellers that basically you know did this once again diagonal uh move that they you know executed to the bit they they, it's, they used to say that they hit the bit and you know on the right side you have a buyers that lift the leave the offer this is this can be a little bit confusing obviously because if you take a look at the depth of market on the left side you have a buyers and on on the right side you have sellers but if you if you take a look at the footprint chart you know it's the opposite you know this is the selling this is buying so you can see that on these kind of a lower uh, let's actually take a look on these kind of a lower sections you know you have five contracts sold you know zero both nine nine contracts sold three bought um and you can calculate the delta from this obviously if you are going from left to right this is you need to put a minus before before these numbers so the delta for this price point which is a 8947 is minus five you know here you have minus nine plus three that's a minus six you know for a negative numbers you know for example at this price point you have a minus 2 plus 11 which is you know 9 um, this is how you calculate delta for for basically each price level and then once candle is closed you can see uh, right here that you have a delta for your uh, whole bar basically this this delta has 83 there is a, a 83 delta for basically this whole bar if I change the settings of, of this footprint, you know, and I will just add it as a next kind of a number. You can see now that on the left side, uh, 
you have a delta for each level like i said you know here you have a minus five minus six um here you have a six and you know so on and so forth uh this is how the delta is calculated for each price and then once candle is closed you'll have overall delta which is basically sum of all these numbers on the left side will be um stuck here on the left so where is kind of your edge is coming from in this um you are basically watching the relationship between a delta and the price action during the day and you really want to be kind of a taking a level uh, taking trades only when when you see any sort of a anomaly and why this is a intraday edge well because when this is going to happen on intraday basis there is not really any new information coming into the market you are working with something that is happening right now you know people who uh get you know too long or too short you know these aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers when you see market is not responding for that they will have to you know cover they will they will have to this is it's called delta unwind you know when when something like this for example happens and this is this is where the in my opinion at least the edge is coming from because obviously it's is the kind of a only information that you are working with uh, at the moment you know in, instead of looking at the daily chart here you know there is so much so much going on you know people who uh, this is really a daily chart you know but if you if you have a large number large sellers you know within one day or one week they can very easily reposition which you will not even you usually notice on on these daily time frames you know um there is not this kind of a immediate immediate edge in in the execution and also uh the markets are constantly changing you know the liquidity um on this down move here is was not same as on this down move here you know these are a uh, couple of months apart from each other so the market conditions are very different you know that there i think here the volumes were much higher instead of this this is the current kind of market environment where the volume is is much slower you know the the overall kind of relationship is a little different in 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 a um you know the market conditions are constantly changing basically so you want to be looking at the situations where there is not much time for many things to change you know you are really looking at what what is kind of happening now and this is you can see this is a crude oil on a five minute chart and this is one of those things where i think it's 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 kind of best to be with the cumulative volume delta because obviously you have a um basically two patterns when it comes to cumulative volume delta which is kind of the same as uh which is basically the same as you know any kind of a oscillator or or kind of a classic indicator the first one is obviously when market is uh let's say you go up and market makes a lower high um at a kind of level and the cvd makes a higher high you know this is called the absorption okay because obviously the i'm not going to type the whole thing uh because obviously you know market is making a lower high the price is making a lower high but the cumulative volume delta is making a higher high this means that there is a large amount of the market orders buying into into you know the, this kind of a prior resistance but market is not responding that uh, to that and there is a second pattern which is that price makes a uh, higher high but the cumulative volume delta makes a lower high uh, this is the exhaustion you know this is kind of a opposite of market making a new high but there are no um these kind of market orders this is this one the absorption one is actually better 
because as I said, you know, the limit orders are usually the heavier hand in the market. So, so this is your better case. This is this, is, but this is also something you should be paying attention to because for any kind of a healthy uptrend, you want to have both market orders and limit orders go hand in hand. You know, when one side is not kind of a accepting that or doesn't kind of agree on on, the, on these new prices, you know, these trends will usually struggle, you know, when both kind of go hand in hand, it's, you know, there is really a, no, it's, it's a easy way for market to go. So both of these should agree, but sometimes when this is not going to happen, this is your edge, you know, I know that a lot of people look at cumulative volume delta and they just use it as kind of a trend following indicator, you know, they are just seeing delta going up, price will, is going up, so they will buy, but in general, you want to see these uh, situations where um, there is there is something, you know, kind of a inefficient going on. And I picked up this, this trade in the crude oil because there is not really a divergence you know basically there is a market it's kind of you have a divergence to the downside you know market is going higher delta delta is going to pull back um you know lower if you want you know this is a, actually a good trade i will talk about this in a bit but uh, on this day i was i was more of a interested in shorting and as you can see you know market is going to reach this kind of level of sr where i where i wanted to execute and look at the, the both kind of price action and a and uh, delta you know you go from this kind of a more stable you know range calm you know compression to the upside to this kind of a fast move to the upside which is also represented in a cumulative volume delta this is um nothing kind of unusual because obviously there is no no divergence you know market makes a new high delta makes a new high this is all kind of normal but since we are trading into the level of resistance and since i am uh, interested in going short basically this is actually a good sign for me to to add confidence to my shorts because you know you have all these market buyers buying into the level and once it gets hit you can see that price is just completely you know going to stop so this is not the cumulative volume delta is is one of those indicators where you need to think a little bit about you know kind of what is going on in the market and why there is so much buying and price is not responding to that so once market hits the level and then you have kind of a small level of support you know it, we're gonna bounce from it then we're gonna break below it once this is really st going to start to fail you can go short in a um with using this as a confluence because obviously all these people who bought this this upside you know they are in uh, you know they are losing money at the moment and most, more, most likely they will kind of unwind their positions you know they will start closing the longs which will then you know cause the price you know spike down very quickly in a kind of a addition to that you have this kind of a slow slow grinds to the upside where you know all the all these stops from all these long positions basically are having stops below these kind of a higher lows so you have these kind of a two uh two th two situations where first of all you know there are a lot of stops so once price one once market you know going to start to hit them you will have this small cascade obviously this is not bitcoin so the crude oil is not going to dump you know ten dollars but you can see this very sharp sell-off uh that's that's obviously caused by all these stops getting hit but also the people who tried to chase this move to the upside and got absolutely kind of stuck in this because you can see you know the, the delta here in this in this section is pretty high so there is a lot of buying that is underwater and they will have to have, have to cover their trades okay um this is most likely my favorite my favorite way of using a cumulative volume delta because obviously this one 
this one was kind of a mean uh, mean reversion trade you know you have you are basically fading the move higher you know uh, what is what is very often easier thing to do is you know go with the trend I know most people usually try to fade everything but you know the path of least resistance when when market is just going down is is, is, is you know easier thing to do this is ES this is RTH profile only so there is uh, not that much you know information but I just wanted to kind of a um, clear that you can see at end of each day how we have this sharp selling of deltas you know people usually covering their positions or whatever but uh, you know this market is generally in a downtrend you know for for, for the last month of, month or so and on this previous day we traded above this kind of high here uh, you can see uh, this is this is one of those things where Delta is going down the whole day and market is just kind of very slowly drifting up um, there will be days like this you know this is once again not kind of a be all and end all uh, cumulative volume Delta will on a lot of days not going to you know represent the price uh, completely so um, this this that's something kind of worth paying attention to that you will you will have days when these things will be completely different to each other and you need to so don't rely on this you know completely use this once again as, as a confluence for your own kind of a system um, but yeah like I said this is this is these are the ones that I like to trade the most when it comes to CVD um, for whatever reason let's say I'm bearish you know market uh, traded above above this level of resistance a little bit then it kept down you know you have once again this kind of a slow 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 compression to the upside from the open we're going to fill the the RTH gap and then start to breaking down so you know I, I wasn't trading this you know I took a trade in the crude oil but I didn't take a trade here this is actually this is a 10,000 10, uh, 10, tick chart by the way it's not a time based rotation but it doesn't matter um, so let's say that I'm for whatever reason I'm, I want to go short and market kind of breaks this first level of support here and you can see on a pullback you have pretty much the equal highs you have a resistance which we kind of a uh, breach a little bit but look at the cumulative volume delta you know the amount of buying that came into the same level is much higher so this is kind of your absorption in a pullback you know you have a basically established trend uh, basically you know market is going one direction uh, let me kind of draw this again market will be already you know trending so let's say you are picking up in a uptrend you know this is your price and this is you know your price and the Jesus and the CVD for this uptrend will kind of a go with the price and then on this pullback it's going to do something like this okay so you will have this divergence where on a kind of established trend market will market sellers will all of a sudden kind of a really step in and try to shift the environment which is just not going to happen and market will continue higher and this like then will be much quicker because all these people who sold into the pullback here they will start covering their short positions and you know it will result in a you know even faster move higher so this is this is really how i like to use the cumulative volume delta and this it's not kind of once again the be all and end all because you can see for example here we have kind of a established downtrend market then um pulls back just a little bit here you know into this kind of level of SR is a little bit messy but you can see once again a lot of buying coming into this leg you don't need to sell it immediately but if you wait you know for one more kind of a SR flip in here and you will fade this this is something you know this is what I was talking about a lot of buying happened you know in this area these buyers are underwater they will have to cover their positions and market will you know completely change the pace and just flush lower and you know once again this is a intraday you know tick time frame there is not 
uh, much of a kind of a new information that can can step into the market. You know, this is why I think this thing works best on a intraday chart because obviously if this would be kind of a multi-day um, thing, and I I already explained this in a previous video and kind of showed this example before. But let's say that you, uh, I hope that I will kind of draw this well. <laughs> Uh, let's say that you have this once again, this relationship between price, which, you know, is going to do something like, let me just try to, <laughs> um, figure this out. Okay. So let's say something like this and you are making kind of a decision on your trade here. So this is your price and this is your CVD. And the CVD is going to do something like, uh, <laughs> okay, let's, let's say this is your CVD and a lot of people will look at this. This is, let's say like H one time frame, and this is, you know, your Monday, this is Tuesday. Uh, and you know, we are coming basically into Wednesday here and people will will basically look at this and say that you know market make made a higher high here but the cumulative volume delta is not making that same higher high so it's a uh, you know there are no new market buyers there is there's just a exhaustion in the market and you know this will this will go lower but you know what do you know you had this kind of a huge down like to the downside, which, you know, on, on a kind of a equal low pullback happened. So the, the shift in dynamic here is, is a little bit, you know, different. And since you are really giving this much long, longer period of time, you know, it's, it's much harder to kind of understand what is intention from these buyers and sellers on kind of a multi-day, you know, time frames. It's, it's, yeah, like I said, use this on a as a intraday indicator. At least that's what I do. Uh, the last thing, the exo charts. Uh, this is Bybit. You know, mm, the crypto market. Obviously, the you have all all these different exchanges. You have uh, some tools that will aggregate these data for you. Uh, I look at Bybit because I think it's a you know the biggest kind of a retail exchange so all these all these youtubers and everyone is is doing the best they can to show their reflings you know so you have a lot of retail traders trading on bybit so these kind of a inefficiencies where you know market buyers and sellers are aggressively kind of stepping in and and price is not re representing that is are going to be very obvious on Bybit basically. Um, one of the other things, this is the B BTC USDT chart. You know, I, I recently looked at, at Bybit and this thing has, has actually more volume uh, than the inverse contract. So if you are trading on Bybit and you were looking at the BTC USD, it's kind of worth to cons consider, you know, switching to this if you, if you, or at least, you know, give it a, give it kind of a try. So, you know, this once again, very simple, uh, thing, you know, and it's, this will be, it's crazy how, how obvious this is on Bybit a lot of times, you know, once again, um, if you, you know, if you have any kind of a system, you know, for, for, for example, if you would be scalping, you know, you can trade most of these. Uh, I don't, I, you know, they have to fit my kind of over overall system and overall bias, but you will see these, uh, divergences, you know, or these kind of inefficiencies extremely very often. So, you know, market is making a higher low Delta is making higher high, you know, a lot of buying came into this like to the upside market is not representing to that shortly after they will have to unwind these positions, you know, with this large self today. Um, this is the blue line is a VWAP market, you know, is going up from the open. Then we're going to have a pullback into the VWAP 
and look at you know this this kind of a amount of selling that that came to this once again it's not really represented in the price you can you know trade this as as kind of a pullback to the sr with the vweb once you see market turning with this kind of candle with this wick you know you can use footprint for confluence or whatever you can take a scalp long to the new highs you know this is a very simple situation once again you know large selling on the pullback uh if there is something else you know for example this this was very short-lived but uh you can once again see this high large flush of a delta and this is not necessarily any kind of a divergence but if you if you think about these things for a little bit you know you have this all this amount of selling uh went under this level of sr but market breaks above you know these sellers are now in pain and they will have to start covering so once we retest the level here you know you will have very short bounce in price and then you know more more down but you know the the idea is still valid you know um and kind of one last thing is once again this is not really anything too too clear but you make a equal highs and delta is a little bit higher here but this is not not kind of a cleanest one so so let's just kind of end it with that i think i think that i covered basically everything that is to to the delta or at least what i do you know um really i am looking at the situations where it's it's very obvious that one side is really stepping in and i am looking at how market is kind of reacting to that there are more things you can do with the cumulative volume delta you know you can see these shaded backgrounds these are the single bar delta divergences you know this is something that obviously if uh, you have a you know you can see there is a lot of them let me just try to find something which is a little more obvious you know for example this one you have a candle that is closing you know up with this kind of a long wick you have a negative delta on the bar you can see if i zoom in you know minus 354 basically on a high volume so this means that there was a more selling than buying in this candle yet you know it closed up so this is your single bar delta divergence once again you will get a lot of them but you can see how a lot of these are just kind of a small candles uh the minute this candle will be actually bigger like this it's kind of a worth start to paying attention to you know uh really you want to once again looking at these kind of extremes you know you want to have a large buying delta uh in a candle for example this candle would be great if you know it's this this one with the, the divergence if it if it would really close down or if it had a kind of a huge wick to the upside that is taking any kind of level of prior resistance for example you know this this candle is not not really something crazy but you know once you would see the single bar delta divergence you know when when these things would be really obvious you know huge down candle or huge wick above the prior resistance you know with still more buying in the candle that that's your good signal you know picking up every single one of these you know is not not really the best way to do things basically the last thing with the cumulative volume delta you can spot is basically when you have a well, let's see if i can find this i rarely use this but uh it's actually worth to mention if you have something like let me increase the, the size of this a little bit um well it's not something that i see right now and i'm not going to um spend any more time to to finding the example like i said i'm not i'm not really looking at this too often but basically uh imagine that there is this kind of a unusually you know large 
candle basically here, you know, it's it's a huge up bar compared to basically anything else you see you see on a chart. Um, the delta here is kind of equal to that, you know, that there was a large, large kind of buying um, into it. But imagine if the cumulative volume delta candle would only look something like this or this, you know, that would mean that uh, this move up was driven by the limit limit order book, you know, which which happens from time to time and obviously as I as I said the limit orders are kind of a heavier hand in the market uh, what you will often see is that market orders uh, that are you know later removed because like I said it was limit driven basically they will start aggressively buying um, to the somewhere around here and market will just quickly move higher these are hard to catch because you often don't have much time to to jump into that trade you know you will have this small you know delta on this huge up bar and then you know market orders will just pick up to that and they will start to kind of a chasing chasing move and market will move higher you know but this is not the case you know there was a equal amount of market buying and market you know pulled back before making one more leg up so just just one of those things you can you should be looking at but uh, like I said the most important thing when it comes to the cumulative volume delta is understanding or at least you know for me is kind of a short-term tool because I am working with the immediate information in the market you know the people who uh, go heavy on one side or another as this is happening during the one trading session or trading day um they are about to cover you know sooner or later but if i plot this over a couple of days you know i can be missing a lot of important information or just complete kind of shift in a market narrative but if you are looking on a lower time frame so basically this is just the thing that is happening right now and you know you can benefit from that in a short term manner this is also thing to, what is worth to mention is obviously if you see one side going a um, heavy during the intraday time frame it doesn't mean it will you know start a two month of a uptrend or downtrend you know it's an intraday thing you are taking things to next intraday level you are not running every single trade because there were more aggressive buyers uh, than sellers you know in, in kind of a short term price lag okay so i know this was a long and maybe a little bit boring video but i wanted to talk about this because like i said you know i might be completely missing something when it comes to using this thing on a higher time frames but uh from my best belief and how i've been using this tool and both kind of crypto and legacy markets over the years is this is kind of a best way to to do things you know not not following any any kind of a strict divergences or anything but you know using using it for both mean reversion and trend following on a intraday time frames to to have this kind of a overall idea what you know the, the what the aggressive side is doing and how well it's working for them basically okay so that's going to be it